In this video, we're going to be talking about the Goodman inverter side discharge, the GSZS6. We're going to be talking about the efficiency ratings. We're going to be doing a deep dive on how the system performs in both cold weather, hot weather. We're going to talk about the tax credits that it does or doesn't qualify for and why. And we're just going to do basically a general overview to kind of give you a deep dive on this particular system and my two cents on whether or not this is a good system for your home. But before we do that, if you haven't done so already, please make sure you smash that like button for the algorithm and consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't done so already. We put out daily and weekly content on how you can get the best HVAC for your home. So if you find this content helpful, it's a free way that you can show support and it's much appreciated. So if you're tuning into this channel for the first time and you've never heard us talk about inverters or side discharge systems and you have no idea what this is, I have the particular system that we're referencing pulled up right here. And a side discharge unit or the Goodman side discharge system here is basically what it sounds like. Instead of having a fan that discharges off the top of the condenser, which is your outdoor unit, you have a fan that discharges off side of the condenser. So this is still your outdoor unit. And a lot of people, you know, when they look at this, they think it looks like a ductless mini split type system, you know, which is one of the head units that you see on the walls, but it's actually not. This ties into your central air. And the benefit of these systems is that this is a communicating system, which means that the outdoor unit and the indoor unit communicate using a wire and a proprietary thermostat that basically allows them to turn on in unison and function as a variable speed system. So it has both a variable speed compressor as well as a variable speed fan. Now, what does that mean? What is an inverter? Why does this matter? What the difference between a normal system that you're probably used to, if you have just a basic AC at your house, you have what's called a single stage or maybe a two stage system. These systems are basically either on or off. They, there's no in between. An inverter system functions more like you're used to in terms of a car motor in that it ramps up and down from, let's say, 0% capacity up to 100% capacity. So when this Goodman system first comes on, it might come on at 10 or 20% of its rated capacity. And the benefit of this is that number one, you get energy efficiency savings. And number two is that it's extremely quiet because when it first kicks on, it's not running at 100% capacity and then it ramps up slowly. So it's a way that it can maximize comfort because it's just, it's quieter inside and outside. And it just makes for a more comfortable home because instead of blasting on at 100% and then shutting off prematurely, what you'll find with these systems is that they run longer, but they're still more energy efficient because they're running at a variable capacity. And that's why they're considered a variable speed system with a variable speed compressor. And they do, do that using inverter technology. So let's dive into you know some of the warranty information and what the difference is between this particular system and even some of the other systems that are out there like the Daikin Fit, for example. Now, this system has a 10-year parts limited warranty, a 10-year unit replacement limited warranty, as well as a lifetime compressor warranty. Now, lifetime compressor warranty, that's not bad for Goodman is typically considered like a contractor's grade brand, but to have a lifetime compressor warranty is pretty impressive. Now that is for the original purchaser. So if you buy this system for your house and you live in it for 20 years and you want to replace the compressor 20 years from now, they will honor that warranty. So one of the benefits with that is that again, if you plan on staying in your home for a while and this is like you're retired and maybe you're just trying to buy a system that's going to be the last system you purchase forever, then this might be something that gives you that peace of mind because you're like, hey, as long as I'm in this home or until you know I really retire and like move to the old folks home in Florida or whatever, I'll have that compressor under warranty. So at least I don't have to worry about that and I have some peace of mind. And then you also have a 10 year parts warranty and a 10 year unit guarantee, which means that if the compressor goes bad in the first 10 years, they actually give you a brand new unit, not just a compressor. And so that's part of Daikin does the same thing, but it's actually 12 year parts warranty and a 12 year unit replacement guarantee. So it's a little bit longer through Daikin, but just to go through, like I said, some of the other data on this system, we can see that the efficiency is up to 17.5 CR2. As you can see here, it's not Energy Star certified and we'll explain why in a second. But the short answer is it has to do with EER rating or energy efficiency ratio. The SEER rating, what that means is seasonal energy efficiency ratio. So this is how a system performs in the middle of summer at operating conditions and peak temperatures. That's what SEER stands for. And so it's 
an extrapolation of how efficient the system is going to be over the course of a year because you know seasons change whereas eer is how a system performs at maximum capacity and inverters typically do not perform very well or they the eer ratings tend to be a little bit lower on some of them because of the extra components that require power and so when they're at maximum capacity that's not where they get most of their efficiency they get their efficiency by ramping up and down along a continuum so instead of you know every time you got into your car imagine if you just gunned it maybe you're watching this going yeah that's how i drive be like oh okay got it then yeah you probably don't care so much about gas mileage well if you care about gas mileage so to speak with your air conditioner that's how this works it says now let's see here it says it's a single stage compressor that's not true <laughs> so i don't know why that's on the website because you can see it's a variable speed swing compressor so they might be talking about a different system but bottom line is this is the you know the general summation of like kind of how these systems perform now to dive into the energy star data right now i have this pulled up so this is energy star i'll make sure to link this in the description for your convenience but energy star is a website where you can find out if a system is tax credit eligible in your area and so when you look here you can see you know the GSZ H5 or the C7 or the V9 these are different Goodman you know uh, systems this V9 is also an inverter driven system this does qualify for those rebates so does the C7 and the H5 which this is just a single stage split system but these are all tax credit eligible and if you're curious to see you know what systems qualify you can come in here and you can actually click explore models and you can it will pull up a you know when you start to narrow down the models you're looking for you can search a specific model and see if it actually you know pulls up so again I'll make sure to link that in the description but as you can see here the uh, Goodman system does not qualify uh, and, and part of that is going to be how the system performs in high ambient temperatures as well as lower ambient temperatures and so what I mean by that is cold climates and really hot climates so if you're in a and just to give you an idea of what I'm talking about here if we look at the cooling data on this particular system it's actually not that much difference between some of these other systems but if we look at this here you can see it's the at 115 degrees and this is your indoor dry bulb temperature you know 67 degree dry bulb temperature you're have a BTU rating for cooling on a two-tone system of about 19,300 BTUs which means that the system derates at high ambient temperatures now if it doesn't get up to 115 degrees in your area this might not be important for example if you live you know Denver you can see in the summer here we rarely get above 95 maybe 100 it does feel hotter here for whatever reason I think it's because we're at a higher elevation and have thinner air but it, it definitely does feel warmer here but you can see this system only derates to 21,700 BTUs and so versus compared to what it's operating at, at 85 degrees 22,700 BTUs so it doesn't derate that much however in extreme climates when it's really really hot outside you can see at 115 degrees Fahrenheit this system does does derate in terms of its capacity loss. Now, the Daikin Fit system also suffers from this to a little bit lesser extent. This is the Daikin Fit Enhanced. You can see this cools to 20,000 BTUs. So it's still derating, has some capacity loss at those higher ambient temperatures. So that's just something to consider with most of the side discharge systems on the market. However, you can see that the uh, Daikin system, when we go and we look at you know what qualifies, we can see that the Daikin Fit does qualify. However, it qualifies as a cold climate heat pump and if you use that if you click on any model on this energy star gov website and you go to see what models qualify when you click here you can see you know that the daikin fit qualifies in cold climates but it does not in the warmer climates because high ambient energy efficiency ratings but i like to again point that out just to give people context for what's the difference between these systems and whether or not you know they're a good option for you so kind of in summary one of the things to consider if you're going with a Goodman you know one of these inverter heat pumps it also has a lot of the features that other systems have where like I said you get a communicating thermostat that's going to increase efficiency and how the system performs at hot temperatures and cold temperatures that makes it more efficient and then it also has the ability to pair with an air handler and a coil that has what's called an electronic expansion valve now what is an electronic expansion valve an electronic expansion valve basically meters the flow of refrigerant so that the amount of refrigerant going into the coil and then 
it's coming out of the suction line, but basically it's metered more precisely than a thermostatic expansion valve. And the difference you can compare it to would be like a digital signal versus an analog signal. And the benefit is that it's quiet and it's more efficient. And so is this a good system? If you're in a moderate climate or you're looking for a more efficient system than your standard single stage system, and but you're not wanting to maybe splurge on something like the 9 series. So if you look at the Goodman GSZ, V9 or even you know Daikin's DZ9 if you're in a really hot climate then yeah the you know the Goodman system would be a great bang for your buck in terms of that I think it's really impressive that they put out you know a high-end inverter in kind of a contractor's grade version so it's really cool that they came out with this but the bottom line is that you just want to make sure that this is sized appropriately for your home so that it's keeping up on those higher ambient temperatures because as you can see that two-ton system although it doesn't derate terribly you know those temperatures when you go and you look at the higher tonnages when you for example I'll just pull up a five ton which is 60,000 BTUs you can see that the 60,000 BTU system at 115 degrees Fahrenheit derates all the way down to 37,000 BTUs in terms of output compared to 54,000 BTUs at 85 degrees in terms of you know when it's 85 degrees outside and so this is you know every system will struggle when it's 115 degrees outside but the bottom line is you don't want it to lose 30 or 40 percent of its cooling capacity on on the hottest days of the year that's when you need it to keep up the most or make sure that your system is sized accordingly so that on those hotter days your system you're not losing the capacity that you need in order to maintain set point inside even though it's always when it's 115 it's just it's hot everywhere and so you're you're going to kind of deal with that but again talk to a local contractor because the truth is you know i probably wouldn't if you needed a five ton system and you lived in phoenix i would not install the system but i would maybe consider installing a you know a couple smaller systems or like a dike and fit enhanced or a combination of the both but you know that's a, a local contractor is going to be able to advise you on whether or not this is a good product for your specific situation because if you look at the heating data on these particular systems we can see right now for example this is the uh, two-ton system you can see that you know the BTUs per hour is 23,000 at 47 degrees Fahrenheit and in this chart can be a little confusing but I like to dive into it because it gives you a really accurate understanding of how the system actually performs at 47 degrees Fahrenheit it has has a COP of 3.4. What that means is COP is coefficient of performance and it stands for uh, how many watts of electricity it takes to produce one watt of heat. And so if you have a COP of 3.4, that means for one watt of electricity, you have 3.4 watts of heat being generated by that heat pump and so that's how the system you know operates and and that's neck and neck with the dike and fit however when you see at five degrees fahrenheit which is low ambient in terms of performance that derates down to 14,000 BTUs, which off the top of my head, I know that the Daikin Fit is actually at 16,100 BTUs. So that's why the Daikin Fit qualifies, even though it's only 2,000 BTU difference, that's why that qualifies as a cold climate heat pump is because the capacity loss is not there in those colder climates. And the COP or the efficiency on in those colder climates, it still keeps up. However, because the capacity loss is such that the system is not going to be able to function as a primary heat source when it's five degrees outside that's why they don't give it that cold climate eligibility for tax credit purposes as well as the energy star rating even though the system is going to be very efficient so that's just some food for thought and again if you live in a cold climate you know depending on where you live in in uh you know the states or in the world a local contractor is going to be able to advise you on whether or not either of these systems you know would make more sense for you and we hope you found this content helpful so please make sure you smash that like button if you got value from this as well as subscribe to the channel as well as consider subscribing to the channel and if you happen to be in one of the areas we service like Denver Colorado or Phoenix Arizona you can actually schedule an appointment with us for free we come out for free for all first-time customers whether that's for a service call or annual maintenance or if you're just looking for an estimate for system replacement and there's actually a link in the description below where you can actually schedule online at your convenience as well as an up-to-date list of the cities and states that we service so you can stay up to date when we start servicing your metro and as mentioned earlier there's a few videos popping up on the screen right now also related to heat pumps that YouTube thinks you should watch as well as a few about energy efficiency ratings so make sure you check those out if you haven't done so already and we will catch you on the next episode